Hello friends, welcome to Easy Engineering Classes. We are continuing with the preparation series of GATE Computer Science, UGC NET and Bank IT Officer exams for Computer Science. And in today's lecture, we'll study two questions on Theory of Computation which appeared in GATE 2016 paper. So let's get started with our first question. The first question states that which of the following regular expression represents the language the set of all binary strings having two consecutive zeros and two consecutive ones. So in the question, you are given only two conditions that the language or the regular expression that you have to choose should have two consecutive zeros. That means double zero and two consecutive ones. That means a double one. You are neither specified in what order they must appear in what order that means you are not told whether the double zero the consecutive zeros should come before double one or vice versa and neither you are told whether there needs to be some binary digit separating the two consecutive zeros and the two consecutive ones or the both of them the zeros and the ones these double zeros and double ones should be together Okay, so basically neither order is specified, no order specified and nor the placement of zeros and ones. Okay, no position of zeros and ones with respect to each other is specified. So basically you can have two types of strings there can be double there has to be double zero in your string then there may be some binary digits and then double ones and there can be some binary digits before the zeros and some binary digits after the ones or the second kind of strings binary strings that you can generate with the given specified conditions is some binary digit followed by double ones then some binary digits followed by double zeros and some binary digits. Now, these binary digits, these and these, any out of them can or cannot be zero or you can say may or may not be zero. Any of these binary digits may, they may be present or they may not be present. Okay. And same goes for these kind of strings. Okay, so these two types of strings cover all the cases of the binary strings or the language generated by these two conditions where double zero and double one are present. So basically what kind of uh, string, binary string or regular expression we have to specify? Anything that can be formed from 0 and 1 like any kind of string by anything I mean 0 plus 1 star that means any string that can be formed by 0 and 1 followed by a 0 0 then anything I am writing the short form followed by a 1 1 and then anything alright or representing this string any string from 0 and 1 followed by 1 1 then any string see here in this case 0 plus 1 star means lambda is also present that means null string is also present and again anything Sorry. okay so this expression can be represented by 0 plus 1 star followed by double 0 again followed by 0 plus 1 star double 1 and 0 plus 1 star. Similarly, this corresponding expression is also 0 plus 1 star, double 1, 0 plus 1 star, double 0 and 0 plus 1 star. So if you take this part common, see in this expression, if you take double 0, 0 plus 1 star, 1, 1 and 1 1 0 plus 1 star 0 0 and take the first and the end part as common you will end up writing this string okay i'll write it down for you here 
in both these expressions the two common parts are the beginning and the end all right so if you take these two expressions common you will be left with this remaining part and that will be forming your answer answer b all right so this is the expression that will form or the set of all binary strings that have two consecutive zeros and two consecutive ones no other condition is specified so you do not have to worry about any other condition okay now coming to the second question consider the following context free grammar in this grammar you are given uh, g1 and g2 and for each of these you are specified the productions of them now you have to find out which of the following pairs of languages is generated by g1 and g2 basically you have to find out what language is generated by these two grammars respectively so let's start with g1 first if we write out if we start with the starting symbols s and use this production as that means the first production so a string or the production would look like s goes to as now if i continue using this production as and replace this a by this s by as again my string would become like double a s and so on as long as i replace this s with the production as i will get some number of as followed by an s and to terminate this string i would have to use the second production which is s goes to b so at some point when i'm done generating all the as the starting as of my string i'll move on to the second production which is s goes to b and from here i have two options either i can terminate this string by generating a single b or i can continue generating b's by using the second production so if i want to terminate by generating a single b i'll use this first production or i can continue to generate multiple b's by using the second production capital b goes to small b and b okay so any time at any point you uh, if you decide to choose any combination of these production you'll basically end up generating some number of a's some number of a's followed by one or more b okay now why one or more b and not uh, zero b because there is no case when you can terminate this string that is generated by a's without ending or uh, coming to the production uh, the second production that is defined by capital b okay and now you have to also consider that what does some number of a means is it one or more a or is it zero or more a now in this case some number of a's basically mean zero or more a why zero or more a because from g1 and the starting symbol of g1 you can directly jump to the second production using s goes to b so in that case you can skip all the a's and generate strings of the form s uh, strings of the form b raised to power n that is one or more b okay so this is some number of a means zero or more number of a's all right so basically you uh, as long as you repeat the production s goes to as you you generate some number of a's to terminate this string that means to terminate the generation of a's you have to make use of the second production b and then the b production or the term non terminal b leads to a single terminal b or multiple b's okay or the second type of strings that you can generate using g1 is s directly going to non terminal capital b that means generating strings of the form single b or multiple b so what is the language that we generate here we basically generate a raised to power m b raised to power m such that 
m is greater than equal to 0 and n is greater than 0. Now you have to be very careful with this expression. Why? See, m has to be equal to 0 because I told you we can directly skip all the a's and it has to be greater than 0 because we can generate a's. As well as at the same time, you have to tell that there is a possibility of generating one or more b's. So that is specified by n greater than 0. So some number of a's followed by one or more b. Now this is the language generated by g1. Now what is the language generated by g2? Okay, so in the exam, you can uh, find out what is the language generated by G1 and check in the option so as to eliminate certain options. So in this case, M greater than 0, no, we want M greater than equal to 0, M greater than 0, no, M greater than equal to 0. So we have eliminated these two options. Now comes M greater than equal to 0 or N greater than 0, no, we do not want an or condition, we both want both these conditions to be satisfied. So this option is also eliminated and we are only left with option D. So you can mark option D straight away without even generating G2 because in this case the options are so listed down in such a way that you don't need to check for G2. But otherwise I am also telling you for G2 how to check in cases when you are not so sure about the options. So for G2, we can start by using the production S goes to AA or S goes to BB. So this is very clear that any in any case, you have to start either with a A or with a B. There is no uh, way in which you can generate a null here. Okay. So if you start with a A and you have to now replace this capital A or the non-terminal A, you have three options. You have options small a, a, capital B and epsilon or lambda string. So A, A, capital B and epsilon. If you generate A and capital A and terminate it with an epsilon, this would give you a single A, okay, or a single one A single length string okay Sing, single a if you replace this capital a with a b you would end up having two other options which are bb or epsilon and from b if you choose epsilon you would again terminate this string and a single a would be generated here also but if you choose this string you have generated one a or you can uh, you have generated some number of A's and then when you replace it with a B, you have the opportunity of generating some more number of B's. These number of B's may or may not be equal to the number of A. So you have generated some A's and then you are generating some B. Okay. And uh, see, you don't have to be confused that here I have written only one A. Why I am writing here A raised to power M. You can always... Uh, generate the grammar or the string by using the production s goes to a a then replacing it with a a again and then by some num after some number of a's you use the second production a goes to b to generate such kind of strings okay so in this case you can always generate some number of a's by following this production and if you have to terminate you can use the lambda production or if you have to follow these a's by some number of b's you can use a, the second production a goes to b okay so here what kind of strings we can generate some number of a's or we can also generate some number of a's followed by some number of b's an unequal or equal number of b's and the second case if i start my string with s goes to bb what would be that case i can replace it with either epsilon that means i can end this string here only or i can replace this b with another bb that means i can generate some number of b okay so what does the language generated by g look like basically we are able to generate strings 
of this form such that m is greater than 0 or n is greater than 0 and why is it so because a raised to power m and followed by b raised to power n at any point of time both of them cannot be 0 if both of them that means both m and n are 0 the string that would be generated would an empty would be an empty string and this language does not generate this does not accept an empty string because as i told you it will either start from a single a and terminate the minimum string that is minimum length string that is possible is a single a or a single b it does not accept lambda so both m and n equal to 0 are not possible also m equal to 0 is never possible because okay m equal to 0 is possible only in the case b we have only b's and n equal to 0 is possible only in the case we have only a's so this condition basically also translates to when m is 0 n cannot be 0 and when n is 0 m cannot be 0 okay so this is another way of writing which has been expressed in option d here so this was the second grammar was a little tricky but yes if you write down and try to find out all the cases all the possible productions and the combinations that can be generated using these productions then you'll be able to find out the actual language that is generated by these so uh, in such questions it is easy or it is preferred to find out uh, one of the grammars or one of the language generated by a grammar eliminate certain options and then out of the remaining options you choose which is which would be the grammar generated by the second uh, which would be the language generated by the second grammar so this was all about today's lecture. If you understood the lecture, please like this video and share it with your friends and mention in the comment section below how did you find it. Subscribe to the channel of Easy Engineering Classes for more lectures on co computer science related subjects and our preparation series on GATE, UGC, NET and Bank IT Officer exams. Thank you for watching the video. Stay tuned. Good luck.